Agent Carter, Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Now Is Not the End. And yeah, I love this episode. The, the talk, uh, right. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to, including this episode, but nothing that came out after. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAC after Strikers. And then there's some links to the videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, uh, to be clear, over, you know, the next. There's, so there's there's eight episodes of this first season, and I'm going to watch those. I'm going to try to do one a day. We'll see. And after that, it's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season three. Then it's season two of this. So let's dive in. Right, and, and um, I did consider doing, a, you know, also doing a video talking about the Agent Carter one-shot. I have watched it. I quite like it. Apparently that one is set after the rest of the show, not before it. So right now I'm not planning on doing a video talking about it, but if I do, it'll be after I've done the rest of, of the show. It's, yeah. You know, the the um, it helped make sure the, the show got made, but... This first episode is the actual technical pilot episode, the one that sets up the the actual status quo of the, of the show. Anyway, we open on a montage of her getting ready, and we meet Colleen, who urges her to go back into the dating pool. And I quite like the shot of Carter with the red hat and the blue... Um, I don't know, jet jacket, whatever it's called, you know, in this sea of of men who are all dressed the exact same, just you know, great visual there. And this, when when this came out, the, the, you know, there there was a time when the MCU could not go for an extremely long amount of time without having a Stark be really really disrespectful in a in a you know witty way to to someone who had you know US government authority of some kind you know so so we have him you know joking about the you know did you unknowingly sell weapons by definition that is impossible for me to say. I don't know why he's that was not the right accent to do anyway but yeah you know it's funny I'm not gonna claim that it's not and great to see Dominic Cooper as Howard Stark I was always quite fond of that casting choice <clears throat> and yeah we meet some supporting cast members quite like you know so yeah Shea Wiggum Chad Michael Murray um, Kyle Bornheimer and, uh, hold on, it's gotta be here somewhere, huh, I, oh, right, and Enver Gyokai, uh, you know, great, great cast, and, let's see, yeah, we see several times, Peggy and other women having to de deal with sexism. He's a regular. A regular what? I can't say while I'm on the clock. Hound dog. And <laughs> I I quite appreciate, you know, Peggy shoots and then Howard is like, miss me? And it is also like, dude, Jarvis, what are you doing? Just approaching a woman who does not know you, saying you're going to come with me, instead of just saying I'm here on behalf of Howard. Just yeah, <laughs> he's he's really you know I I'm not saying it's out of character. I'm saying it's funny, and let's see, you know it's a it's a funny kind of an an introduction where both of them feel like the other did something really wrong. And, yeah, so we're told, you know, this is going to be about 
Stark's Bad Babies. And uh, let's see the um, Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, Howard needs her help. And yeah, you know, Jarvis agrees that you know he's he's there to to help Peggy and yeah, this thing of you know, oh, you know, call any time before nine. What happens at nine? I go to sleep. That's that's adorable. That's you know, you know let me guess. This is your first uh, you know experience with espionage. Oh no, last year you know I I caught the the cook trying to steal the good silverware. <laughs> and. And yeah, yeah, and you know, she Peggy catches Sousa looking at pictures of Howard on like a, a boat or just I forget what exactly, but some kind of water thing, you know. And she's like, Oh, he must have gotten on there because of her. He hates water, which is you know, a neat little because you know, last we saw he was fleeing across water, so. Yeah, saying that he's definitely not gonna, he's not gonna be traveling by water is gonna buy him some time. Nicely done. And uh, let's see. yeah, and and Peggy is able to hear the the briefing because you know she's bringing coffee. They think of her as a secretary, so they're not gonna say get out of here. This is you know, as Susan said, need to know. And. I don't. I. This this episode was written by men. I I don't know what gave those men the idea. Yeah yeah. It was written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, who also created the show. And I do appreciate you know they they were also right. They they wrote the first Captain America movie and some other MCU stuff. So. You know, they they help define Peggy Carter as she is in the MCU. But I don't know why they're, they're not the only two. There are some men who have this idea that, like, it's some great own to to have like male characters, like, go ah when they hear a woman say you know insinuate that she has some kind of, you know. PMS or some some kind of you know yeah I I I think their writing of women might improve if they met one and we have the yeah so she turns down a dance and then later does agree to it since you know she can use it to to hide and. Yeah, I really appreciate the the dialogue really fits the the setting. Like it really does sound like, you know, I don't know if people did 100% talk like that in 1946, but certainly that's the idea we have of it, you know, based on like movies from the time and and such. You know, it it feel like the the lines in this episode would not feel out of place coming out of Bogie's mouth, you know, and I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, so the the yeah, Peggy manages to to get into Spy Spider Raymond. Very very good. You know, yeah, I I like the character. I like the performance, and uh, you know. Yeah, man. At at first, he's gonna pretend like he doesn't know, you know, what's what she's talking about, and you know, she manages to to trick him into to kissing, and it's again one of those things where I mean, technically, what he just did was sexual assault, and I think we're supposed to be like, yes, it's you know, she was the winner in this scenario. I don't know, it's. I've I've read reviews that say the entire show is like this. Um, I don't know. Maybe it'll grow on me. I I just I 
I don't think it's the best way to, to you know, to fight for women's rights. I definitely do think that is something we should be doing. I don't know if this show is doing the very best job. And let's see, then we have the... I do... I, I do kind of like the, you know, she, so yeah, the, the kiss, and he collapses because the, you know, it was this lipstick that, you know, knocks out the, the, you know, which, yeah, you know, I guess it was invented long before Alias went on the air, but yeah, the, the, um, it was, it was a, a clever little thing, and, and, you know, then afterwards she says, that was a bit premature. Which, yeah, that's, I, I see, I see what you're doing, sneaking in something like that. And I approve. And, let's see, the, um, yeah, so they, yeah, they find the, the, um, yeah, she she finds the the weapon and and calls Jarvis, and Jarvis is like, I'm dreadfully sorry, but I simply must get this souffle into the you know, and she's like, you you get that this is super dangerous, right? Just you know, and you know, yeah. So he got a note from from Howard, and it's this thing of you know, five hundred yards. And and some yeah some various warnings and every you know he points out I you know I don't know where you're gonna get this combination of of chemicals at at this hour but you know she manages and yeah this time she does agree to the dance and pretty quickly gets back out of you know and dip me and and this whole thing <laughs> she is literally dancing around the men on the show the yeah. Very nicely done. Yeah, and, and she comes home and you know Colleen's like, Oh, you were out out. Very tense as she diffuses the, the thing with the with the chemicals. And very cool fight against I guess I don't know what to call him, do I, since they say he doesn't have a name anymore. No name. Let's go with that. But yeah, you know, I, I appreciate. You know, at one point, the the like, you know, he he tries to push her face against like the the what's it called the um fire uh, stove, you know, the lit stove, and she like fights using the the um refrigerator and just yeah some really really great stuff great fight choreography so far and yeah I gotta say I did not expect them to kill off Colleen um, certainly not this early and yeah and and Vanko takes a look at it and this is of course this is the father of Ivan Vanko the villain from Iron Man 2 and yeah, the you know she she knows all about Vita Rays, and she goes into the the file, and we get another flashback. I I don't think we needed quite as many flashbacks in this episode to Captain America one. Um, I appreciate that the show doesn't pretend like Peggy feels nothing about that. I I don't think that would. I, th I think that would be a mistake if the show just pretended like, you know, because there is some American media that acts like in order for a woman to be strong, she has to feel nothing. And that's, you know, yeah, we, we're not stronger if we feel nothing. We're stronger if the, you know, we use our feelings to motivate us to do good. And that is very much the case here. I don't think we needed quite as many flashbacks, though. 
you know, the, the episode opens with one, and then we have one here fairly close to the ending, and I guess it's maybe also because, like, so this is technically all set before the events of the the one-shot, and the one-shot also has flashbacks, or, or clips, I, I suppose not, they're not all flashbacks, but flashbacks and or clips. Um, right, and I did think that the, you know, it's, it's legitimately compelling that this guy, you know, we see him in the, um, we see him in the club, he even kills Spider Raymond, and he manages to, to find her and attack, you know, very, you know, clearly this is a very capable individual. And the fact that he survives the episode, and we don't know exactly who he's working for, and, you know, he does get permission to kill her, you know, very, very, you know, great hook. And, and also, yeah, very clever, this thing of, like, the typewriter where he types something, and then he lets go, and then the, the keys move by themselves to give him an answer from, you know, the other end of the transmission. Yeah, it's a it's a neat little idea. And <laughs> yeah, um Peggy decides that Jarvis should stay in the car because he has never fought anyone, although in his defense the the cook was very verbally aggressive and had long fingernails you know and it does also turn out to be really good because otherwise he wouldn't be have been able to to drive and and pick her you know get to her before the place blew up and let's see yeah the episode has some some cool gadgets i quite like those things that she uses to climb the electric fence without taking, you know, without being injured at all. Radio. What's going on with that radio? Oh, I know. It's Jarvis blowing the, the, almost blowing the whole thing. Like, holy crap. Let's see. And... Yeah, we, we see there is a massive, like, an, uh, you know, the, the guy grabs one of them and, and runs away and, you know, opens the thing and there's just this massive, like, there's maybe a couple dozen in there, maybe a hundred, you know, and he holds up one. And then, you know, if you shoot me, we both die. And just, yeah, very, very cool. And, you know, he drops a couple of choice words and does throw the, the you know, the one that detonates at 500 yards. He throws one of those and then he drives away. She gets away and, you know, jumps on top of the, the car roof, you know, gets into the car. And, yeah, if the car wasn't driving so fast, they would not have gotten away from there. Very nicely done. Good use of setup and payoff. You know, when we're, fo when we're told, you know, oh, 500-yard explosion, we're like, okay, you better be extremely careful that one of them doesn't go off. And, of course, before the episode is over, one of them does go off. And, yeah, the, the explosion, there's like a tornado, and later they say, you know, we can't find the building. And... Yeah, the, you know, there, there was indeed, ta you know, a, a photograph was taken of Peggy as she walked past. So, yeah, that might, you know, I, I suppose I could maybe picture maybe someone, do, you know, but let's, no, yeah, because it wasn't Sousa. Who was going to develop it? I don't think he and and Jack were going with Dooley, but yeah, it it could really compromise her. And let's 
yeah, and, and, you know, Jarvis and Peggy talk about Leviathan, which is also, I'm really excited to see what that's going to turn out to be. And, 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 yeah, you know, I, I did think it worked when she is talking like, you know, the, the, it was my fault that they died, you know, and yeah, that is legitimately, um, what's the word? That is something that, that some people in that situation feel, and I, yeah, I appreciate the, the episode confronting that right and yeah I uh, was not a huge fan of when you know Jarvis says you know one of Stark's more amorous admirers has refused to vacate his penthouse I'm presently supervising her extraction and you know she says I imagine that's quite believable he says you have no idea I, again like that's yeah that's just insulting to to women. It's not empowering. Um, let's see. I think that is about... Right, and yeah, the, the bit when, you know, could you bring the car around? Certainly. When would you like it? Oh, in about 20 seconds. Meet me on the access road. Do you know I'm being shot at? And... Yeah, and the thing with, you know, Jack says, you know, these surveillance reports need to be found. You're really so much better at that kind of thing. You know, he's he's like, you know, he's saying you're a woman, You this is what you do. And then she responds, what kind of thing is that, Agent Thompson? The alphabet? I could teach you. Let's start with words beginning with A. <laughs> very, very... Nicely done, and I think that is about right. And and yeah, um, when Peggy asks Mr. Raymond, "Is this a bad time?" and he responds, "We'll only know after it's over." And I I did enjoy her. Peggy dealing with the the regular regular hound dog, you know that was that was quite satisfying. You know, just stabs him, and she's like, "Okay, so you need to get help in ninety seconds, or you're going to perish." Based on the way you've been behaving lately, do you think you will get that help? You know, so here's the deal. I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be okay, provided you tip really well, and you never show up here again, you know, and we get this shot of, I'm afraid I forget, was it, was her name Rose? There's also an Angie, um, I, I'm afraid I didn't catch the, the name, but, yeah, the, the waitress, you know, sees, you know, he's, you know, hand, you know, he's, he's tipping really well, and she's like, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't see that coming, but nice. And we close on, apparently Jarvis is like explaining to, to Howard how to make a, a drink or something like that. And then he says, I think she'll do quite nicely. And no, I don't think she's suspicious or suspects something like that. Very nicely done. So, yeah, um, that that was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see exactly what... Yeah, um, that brings us to the episode's IMDb trivia, and let's see, the effect of the Leviathan typewriter writing by itself was achieved by placing a second typewriter under the desk and attaching strings to the keys of the first. During the scenes, property master Sean Mannion sat below the desk to type each message. Right, and and yeah, 
Agent Carter wears red, white, and blue to work as a tribute to her fall in love with Captain America. This was acknowledged by the costume department. And yeah, the Vita Ray scanner, you know, says prop of Dr. Erskine. And huh, a sequence that was abandoned after proving too difficult to shoot involved the nitramine bomb found in Spider Raymond's safe rolling around the dance floor with people almost stepping on it. And let's see. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. The pilot's title is inspired by an early WW2 speech by Winston Churchill. Now, this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. No, that wasn't supposed to be an accurate Churchill impersonation. And that. Ha! Yeah, so Nitra Mean. There is an entire class of high explosives known as nitroamines, nitro, aka nitramines. Or mines? I don't know if, how. So yeah, the most famous one is RDX, the main ingredient in C4. And. Right, and yeah, after stealing the nitramine, Agent Carter is seen getting into a yellow and red taxi. The Lucky Star Cab Company taxi from the chase sequence in Captain America 1. Oh, Dominic Cooper, who plays Howard Stark, is the partner of Ruth Naga, who plays Reyna on Agent Carter's sister show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Very cool. And... Yeah. Um, that is it for the pilot. So... Yeah, um, in the in the description box, there will be a link to all of my videos on this show, so you can keep up with, you know, yeah, as you, in case you're, you, you it's specific episodes you want to hear me talk about, and yeah. Um, I will try to do an episode tomorrow and try to figure out by then if it is possible to answer if you un if you can confirm if you unknowingly did something. <laughs>